Texas at Baylor, the last game we're talking about recap wise. Not much to say here in terms of like we know Texas is a good team offensively. They did what they needed to do. Uh, took a little bit to get going there, but this defense is ridiculous, right? And we knew that Soy Robertson was going to struggle. He got, he got, he, he was out of the game. Uh, late there, didn't matter. Uh, this was a beat down. Thirty eight six doesn't do it justice. I don't think <laughs> this was a smackdown. Early on though, oh man, it's seven three or whatever, and 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 Quinn Ewers threw kind of like a. Kind of a not so great pass, but it, it was inaccurate, which caused it to like like the Baylor guy, the Baylor defender, can't think of who it was, but he was he was about to take it to the house. Like if it was an actual accurate pass, he would have taken it to the house, and also it would have been ten seven. But uh, that's just a funny, funny hypothetical there. But this was this was out of reach. We both took Texas minus fifteen, or I took Texas minus fifteen. You took Baylor plus fifteen. I know you're trying to hold on to that taking Baylor over seven and a half wins, but uh. We're over seven wins, whatever it was. But uh look what they did need Blake Shaven back so bad. They do. And now I I take away from this game, I didn't learn anything new about Baylor. I mean, we knew Soy Robertson's not very good. We knew they've been they were gonna struggle to run the ball against a really good Texas front. It was more about is Texas gonna play well? And are they gonna make a statement win in the Big Twelve? which we talked about was like, Hey, you're coming in this year. You got to let everybody know you're not messing around. You know, the Texas is back of the past. Never really meant something this year. You actually do. And I thought they did that. And it was nice to see Quinn yours put up points. Malik Murphy even got in the ball game. That was nice. Jonathan uh, Brooks ran the ball. Well, um, obviously the, the tight end Sanders went for over a hundred. Uh, and then you shut down Baylor's offense. They had to put in RJ Martinez who didn't do much more than Soy Robertson. So it was a nice convincing win for Texas. It was good to see, you know, them, them not be sluggish for two straight weeks after kind of walk sleepwalking through Wyoming, especially going on the road in, in a hostile environment. Who, I guess, I, I wouldn't call it quite hostile, but it's still hard to win on the road in, in Waco there. Um, and they're only one and zero in conference play, but they still got a lot of work to do. But, I, yeah, I was hoping to see a little bit more from Baylor, but I'm not surprised that. Texas came out ready to play, especially in that second quarter, and they didn't ever look back. So good for Texas, good for Sark, good for Quinn Ewers. Yeah, and now now you're kind of looking at Texas when you, you, you're you looking at the schedule. You're kind of chalking, chalking, chalking. Now you're really looking at that Oklahoma game, as and it is circled because uh, Oklahoma's looked really good up to this point. They played a tough game against Cincinnati. We talked about it uh, during the Oklahoma-Cincinnati recap. If you're watching this video, then you want to check that out. Um, talked about Oklahoma giving up some interior pressure to Cincinnati's defensive line. Could be the case too. Texas might give Oklahoma problems there as well, uh, which could stagnate the offense just a little bit. And uh, look, I, Texas' offense is fine. I know that their offense success rate or whatever is not great. Their offense is fine. All right, they're running the ball fine. Quinn Ewers is making plays when he needs to make plays. Um, he's a pretty good quarterback. So I'm a big. Well, I shouldn't say I'm a big fan of Texas Giga Maggies, but uh, I'm a big fan of the potential of this team. I, th- I think they can be – this is – in my eyes right now, this is a playoff team. So, I mean, they should, I mean they're number three team in the country. The eight people, it's a playoff team in my eyes. For sure. And I wouldn't I wouldn't step over Kansas quite. And and obviously the talent gap against Kansas and Texas. And Texas that loves it. losing to Kansas. They love <laughs> losing to Kansas. That was even before Kansas was good. They were losing – you know, Texas was losing to Kansas. But all jokes aside, Jalen Daniels is legit. And he's a type of athlete and a type of player that can give Texas defense a problem. We talked about this. We've talked about it all season. In, in college football in 2023, elite offenses can beat elite defenses no matter how good that defense is. If that offense shows up to play, they're going to put up points. And I think Kansas can do that. I wouldn't call their offense elite in terms of like Ohio State last year or even Bama a couple, three years ago, right? Or even, you know, I guess Texas when they want to be talent-wise. Um, but they, they can put up some points, and they could really scare Texas um, if, if Texas lets that happen. Obviously, it's going to be a look-ahead spot, Oklahoma, the Red River rivalry game the next week. Um, but you get past, the, you know, these two weeks here, and you get into your bye week, and then it's a really manageable schedule after that. 
Kansas State is not who we thought they were going to be at this point, right? BYU might even be your toughest game. After I that. think Kansas State's is good. still good. I think they're still good. DJ Giddens, holy cow, what a game, by the way. Was it yeah. four touchdowns, 200 yards? <laughs> For sure. I, I actually think they're good. I like Will Howard. I like that defense. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, even at TCU, obviously it's going to be at TCU, but it's not, you know, the team of last year that you had to beat, that you'd lose to last year. And then Texas Tech, in the year, obviously they're struggling right now. They can get their act together by week 13. But, yeah, I think if you're a Texas fan, you've got to feel really good about it. Switching over to Baylor, oh, man, it kind of gets really easy. <laughs> now they could they could still, you know, really struggle in a lot of these games. But you look Are at you the calling West schedule. Virginia an easy team? No, and that's who I was about to circle. I was, I was like, hey, it's going to come down. It's going to come down to West Virginia. Oh, and gosh. West Virginia and Neil Brown are going are to snake me, you know, for my over seven and a half uh, with Baylor for the year there. Um, but obviously, you got a lot of things to get right. Hopefully, at UCF, you can get a win there without John Rice Plum- Plumley. Hey, Timmy Maybe. McLean. Dude's kind of uh, yeah. frisky. I don't know. No, he, he is. He is. But Texas Tech is sliding. Then you get a bye week. Hopefully, Blake Shapin's back. And then you can really attack the second half of your schedule there for Baylor. I'm not giving up hope on you guys. Hopefully that team hasn't given up hope. But one and three is not the start you wanted this year when you had a winnable game like Utah. And and obviously Texas State's unexcusable. But I, I wouldn't put too much stock into Texas kind of bullying you because they're going to do that to a couple teams, a good amount of teams in the Big 12 this year. Um, 